In this video, we're going to solve a problem which appeared in G Advanced 2019. In this particular problem, it is given that alpha and beta are the roots of the equation x square minus x minus 1 and alpha is greater than beta. And they must satisfy some uh, sequences. What's that? There is a sequence where is a n uh, alpha n minus beta n divided by alpha minus beta and b n which is related to a, a, uh, a n right by the relation a n minus 1 and a n plus 1. Now we have to find out the correct option. Now here we have multiple options correct. So therefore we need to find out right or we treat have to treat this problem as we have to solve four different problems. So based on that uh, thing, first we need to find the summation of bn by 10 to the power n, uh, then a summation of a n 10 to the power n and all that stuff. And we have to find out that which one option is correct. So let's go ahead and solve this problem step by step. So first, we consider that alpha and beta are the roots of the equation x square minus x minus 1. So by default, right, we know that, right, what is the sum of the roots and product of the roots. So therefore, alpha plus beta will be 1 and alpha beta will be minus 1, right? That's the sum and product of the roots. Now, we consider what is our a n, the sequence, right, a n. So here, right, we need to find out that a n explicitly as well as, right, we have given that b1 and b n, right? That's it. So first, right, we need to understand that what is our uh, b n, right? So notice that, right, b n is equal to a n minus 1 and a n plus 1 summation. So therefore, we need to find out separately what is a n minus 1 and what is a n plus 1. So therefore, first we need to calculate what is a n plus 1. To calculate a n plus 1, we need to substitute uh, n equal to n plus 1, right? n equal to n plus 1 for the case of n, right? So let's go ahead and substitute it. So if we go ahead, we get that a n plus 1 is equal to alpha to the power n plus 1 minus beta to the power n plus 1 divided by alpha minus beta. Now, we know the formula. So here we recall one long division formula. It says that x to the power n minus y to the power n divided by x minus y is equal to okay x to the power uh, m minus 1 plus x to the power m minus 2 into y and so on, right? So what it says, it says that the power of x, right, will start with a minus 1 and as it goes from left to right, the power of x will decrease and the power of y will increase, just like a binomial theorem, right? Though it's not a binomial theorem, we just did a long division. We can go ahead with any other technique as well. Using binomial also, we can prove that. Okay, let's go ahead. So here, right, we first expand it, right, using that binomial theorem. So therefore, a n plus 1 can be written as alpha to the power n in plus alpha to the power n minus 1 into beta n minus 2 into beta square and so on and ends with beta to the power n. So now here, right, we'll use one relation. So here notice that from here we identify that alpha and beta is equal to minus 1. So therefore, one beta can be written as, as minus 1 by alpha, right? So therefore, this term, right, alpha to the power n minus 1 can be written as now alpha to the power n minus 1 minus 1 by alpha with a minus sign. For the second, it can be written as alpha to the power n minus 2, one beta we get aside and the next one, right, for one beta we replace by 1 by alpha and so on, right? So therefore, for every term, right, in this uh, bracket, whatever I'm showing it in the screen, right, that every term in this bracket, one beta we replace by 1 by alpha, right, so that we reduce the power of 1, uh, alpha by 1. So therefore, we just replace that relation and reduce it in that respective form. So this is the only step we have to take some time, okay? And here, right, this process we have to do, and this is a tricky problem, right? Why are we doing so? Because we just uh, seen in a minute, okay? So now see that, right? If we replace that, right, our relation of a n plus 1 will be re replaced by, right, alpha to the power n minus starting from alpha to the power n minus 2 and ends with beta to the power n minus 2 term, and we have beta n, right? That's it. Now let's go ahead. 
now if we if we if we notice that if we notice this relation right we can go ahead and rewrite this term as right that a n plus 1 is equal to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n and with a minus common from the all of the terms right that's it so now our job is to relocate our job is to relocate this particular state now notice that right whatever they are inside the bracket right so that we, we can easily write it as a in minus one isn't it okay let's see that let's go ahead so now we consider what is a in minus one so in minus one will be obviously that it will be uh, uh written as as right alpha to the power in minus one beta to the power in minus one and all that stuff so now if we use the same identity right as we uh, written it here right the same identity that what is x to the power a minus y to the power n divided by x minus y so here if i replace m by n minus 1 so it will start with right that x to the power n minus 2 ends with uh, y to the power n minus 2 so therefore whatever term inside the bracket right or the inside the curly bracket that will be represented by a n minus 1 so therefore we rewrite that a n plus 1 is equal to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n and minus a to the power n minus 1 hence we can rewrite that a n minus 1 and a n plus 1 summation will be alpha to the power n and beta to the power n now let's uh, take care of the expression of b a beta uh, sorry b n so therefore we can easily say that b n is equal to alpha to the power n plus beta to the power n when n is greater than or equal to 2 now just take care or to just take a look of the option b now see that in option b it is we cannot say it is true because here it says that for all uh, n greater than or equal to one so therefore first we take that n equal to one and just assuming that the relation is true that beta b in relation is true for n equal to one i'm not sure but we just assume it now here if we trying to calculate that beta one using this formula right so you see that beta 1 is equal to alpha plus beta notice that alpha plus beta uh, is always 1 because they are the roots of the equation x square minus x minus uh, minus 1 right so therefore we can say that right beta 1 is 1 so the, and also this will satisfy the initial conditions right or the initial conditions right so therefore we will say that right that the relation b, we can say bn is true for a greater than equal to 1 and hence we can say option b for this particular problem is correct okay that's it let's go ahead okay so now we see that one option is already tested and uh, we calculate that now our next job is to test or is to find out right the uh, uh, value of s right a value of some uh, series is right so what series we can see see that here we have uh, option a b b n by 10 to the power n let's go ahead for that so first we consider right that uh, s right so here is we consider as b n by 10 to the power n what is b n here alpha n by b 10 so let's substitute that so therefore if we take that 10 to the power n inside right we get two series right one is alpha n by 10 to the power n another one is beta n by 10 to the power n now notice that right now notice that right these two series right are in gp series right so here we can say that a n by 10 to the power n is an infinite gp where the first term is right alpha by 10 and the common ratio is alpha by 10 so therefore this sub will be easily rewritten as right that alpha by 10 divided by 1 minus alpha by 10 why i saw because we saw that that a summation of an infinite gp series is the common ratio r and first term a is equal to a divided by 1 minus r now if i multiply the denominator and numerator by 10 we will get the some values for the next case also we use the similar notation and we calculate the sum as beta divided by 10 minus beta okay that's it so therefore for this particular problem of the summation is we are able to find out the both the summation values right so let's substitute those values here so therefore we get s in a forms of alpha beta now with lcm technique we can easily add them together so let's go ahead uh we can easily observe right that uh 
this alpha minus 10 and uh, 10 minus alpha and all that stuff, right? It can be added up, right, by normal LCM method. So let's perform that. So what is my LCM? 10 alpha minus alpha into 10 minus beta. And in that denominator, uh, you know, numerator, we have alpha into 10 minus beta plus beta into 10 minus alpha. Let's uh, multiply that, right? So therefore, if we multiply, right, we get it as 10 minus alpha minus alpha beta and so on and so forth, right? That's a very uh, normal calculation. So therefore, we get it as it will be equal to 10 into alpha plus beta minus 2 alpha beta divided by 100 minus, right? Whatever the remaining, right? Now here, alpha plus beta is well known and alpha beta is also known. So alpha plus beta is 1, alpha beta is minus 1. Let's replace by that. And doing a simple calculation, we find that S is equal to 12 by 89. So therefore, it gives us that summation of B and by 10 to the power n is 12 by 89. So which is not matched with option A. So therefore, we'll say that option B is definitely wrong. So now we have to test that option C and option D. Let's go ahead. So now, well, we need to test that option C. So what is option C? We need to find out the summation of right a1 to a n, right? So let's consider that sum is equal to s. And therefore, right, what is a? We know that, right, that a n or a i is equal to alpha to the power uh, a beta to the power n and all the stuff. Let's substitute by that. Okay, that's it. Now here, right, we can easily know that that denominator alpha minus beta is doesn't depends on the index variable i. So we can take out from that summation and therefore we can split the summation as well, right? Now also we know that that summation i equal to 1 to n alpha i is a GP series with the first term alpha common ratio alpha. For the next one is the first term is beta common ratio is uh, beta as well. So therefore using the normal GP series formula we can rewrite the sum of that series, right? Now here, right, we need to do some basic calculation. So let's go ahead. So here we know that that summation we can easily rewritten in the following form. Now here, look carefully, right? Here, what is what alpha plus beta, right? So alpha plus beta here, right, is equal to one. So one minus alpha can be easily written as, as uh, minus, uh, sorry, uh, b plus beta and one minus beta can be replaced by alpha. So therefore, these two can be replaced by beta and alpha. So now let's uh, re replace that as it is, right? So therefore, if we replace that, we get it as uh, one minus alpha beta and all the stuff. Now see, we need to add them together. So just multiply, use the normal LCM technique. So here alpha and beta are the LCM and if we multiply, and do the basic arithmetic calculation that you can do easily and substitute that wherever you see alpha or beta we just replace by minus one we can easily say that this relation can be simplified as one by alpha minus beta multiplied by alpha square minus beta square minus alpha to the power n plus two and the remaining thing so now notice carefully what is alpha square minus beta square that can be written as, as alpha plus beta into alpha minus beta so therefore right if i if i rewrite this term alpha square minus beta square as alpha minus beta multiplied by alpha plus beta so this one alpha minus beta will be cancelled out so we'll have alpha plus beta and the uh, alpha square minus beta square minus beta to the power n by 2 divided by alpha minus beta so if we rewrite so right and use the that condition we get a mostly simplified form so now let's go ahead and find the is in the desired form right let's go ahead we all know that what is alpha plus beta let's substitute the value as one okay because uh, that value we already know that so this is one and what about the next term right you can see that this is equal to a n n plus two right because if i replace n by n plus two we'll get this expression so therefore we'll say that it will be equal to minus of one a one minus uh, the remaining thing so now if i rearrange the terms right if we rearrange the term we can find that then s is equal to one plus a in plus two and hence we can obtain that option c is the correct option so b and c are correct for this particular problem 
Now only one option is left and that is option D. So that is also need to be tested now. Let's go ahead and find out that sum separately. Now, for the last case, right, we consider the same ac is equal to a n by 10 to the power n. We know n is equal to alpha, alpha to the power n minus beta to the power n divided by alpha minus beta. Let's substitute that and alpha minus beta doesn't depend on that uh, particular case. So, therefore, right, we write down that as alpha minus beta common and whatever they are inside. Now, as well, right, alpha by 10 and beta by 10 whole to the power n that will form a GP series for the first case, it will be alpha by 10 for some common ratio, uh, alpha by 10 for the second is beta by 10, beta by 10 is the common ratio. We already performed that calculation. So, using that GP series infinite GP series summation, we can rewrite the final value. Now, here, both the cases, right, both the terms, right, that uh, both the terms here, we can multiply denominator and numerator by 10 and rewritten in a very simplified form. Let's add them together by a normal LCM technique. Now, here, right, we can simplify by 10 alpha minus alpha beta and so on and so forth. Now, see that alpha and beta will be cancelled out. And if we multiply the denominator, we write down it as 100 minus 10 alpha minus 10 beta and plus alpha beta. So now just uh, do this calculation. So one alpha beta here will be cancelled obviously and you can write 10 alpha minus beta 100 and this two will be written as 10 alpha plus beta and alpha plus beta is equal to minus one. So therefore we just rewrite that particular values. So now notice if I go ahead right and substitute that particular values now we get it as right that in the numerator in the numerator we have alpha plus beta term so that will be plus one in the denominator also plus one so let's substitute the appropriate values in the places right so therefore we get it as it will be equal to 10 divided by 100 minus 10 into 1 into 1 minus 1 and all that stuff, right? So therefore, we if we calculate the value, it will give us 10 by 89. And hence, option D is correct. And that's it. So here, for this particular problem, there are three options are correct. That is option B, option C, and option D. Okay, that's it. So now, for this particular problem, you can understand that it is a very, very long problem, right? It just doesn't take a small uh, amount of time, right? It's an easy one. You have to do it step by step, but it takes a huge lot of time to solve that problem. But what to do? We, we have to do that in that uh, advanced level problem in J. Let's go ahead and uh, underst understand it again from the beginning. So now see, to solve that part, any problem, when you see that multiple option is there, always try to uh, solve the problem mostly, right, using the option wise, right, and especially for this kind of problem, because here, all the problems are actually separate problems. So here, it is not a one problem, you have to treat it as multiple problem as a four, and try to find that value and verify it with that given thing, okay, that's it. Hope you understood it. Thank you.